It's BD. Today I'm going to be talking about the main theories behind penis enlargement, why they work in a biological, physiological, and atomical sense. So let's get into it. But first, like, subscribe, all the YouTube shit. I have a Patreon that I will eventually have actual applicable knowledge on because I feel bad just not having anything on there. And then I saw men's health aids at Peak Male Physique. They are not needed, but they can help. Let's begin. Okay. Okay. So on the Reddit, I posted a post. Wow, right. Talking about Mechanostat theory and Davis's law. Basically, this is the fundamentals behind any soft tissue reformation. But your typical argument against a skeptic goes something like this. There is no medical evidence for penis enlargement working, therefore it is all fake. Well, first of all, Doc Hank, my partner, has a plethora of curated research studies proving that penis enlargement works. So that argument falls flat on its face. Then you have guys like Leo on Longevity saying, that you can't increase the size of your penis. What you can do, however, is increase the flexibility and length of the suspensory ligament and increase erection quality, feigning length and girth gains. That also vastly underestimates the body's adaptation response and shows a failure to understand the basic biological principles behind penis enlargement. So let's talk about mechanostat theory of reformation. This predominantly explains the shifts in density in bone size, but it also talks about soft tissues. <sighs> so it basically goes like this. Too much strain on a tissue will cause damage beyond repair. Adequate amounts of strain cause positive adaptation to better be able to handle said strain. And not enough strain constantly will cause the tissue to deteriorate in quality, strength, etc. So if you're chronically lifting or constantly lifting heavy objects, your bones get better at handling that strain. Same for the soft tissues that connect your muscles to your bones. That is more covered under Davis's law and those rules are a little more fast and loose. Since soft tissue is soft, it is better able at stretching and therefore it has a better strain rate. Now notice how I've been saying strain, not damage. In a medical sense, damage and strain are not the same thing. That's why Hank does not like us saying damage. So the correct thing to be saying is stress, strain, stimulus from here on out. So since the same rules apply to bones as they do to soft tissue, a too much uh, stimulus strain causes damage. An adequate amount of strain causes beneficial response to said stimulus for better being able to handle it which would be growth increases in flexibility and strength and then not enough strain causes atrophy of the tissue as well as loss in strength and size which was what atrophy means right anyway <laughs> now don't get it twisted with uh the penis being skeletal muscle it is not so ignore any skeletal muscle hypertrophy properties when talking about the penis there are some overlaps, but it's not the same thing. The penis is solely made out of soft tissues. Mostly connective tissues and mostly blood healing and obviously have nerves for sensation. Since they're soft tissues, they both apply under Davis's law. We can stop here, video over, but <laughs> now we are gonna break it down a bit further. Connective tissue is made up of something called collagen bound up in fibrils. These basically weave together to make um, soft structures to handle load. When they are under strain, they secrete hormones telling the body, saying, hey, we're kind of at our edge of our rope here. We need to get bigger and stronger so it can better handle this stress. And your body slowly over time builds up more collagen. It makes it stronger and more flexible in that area. So the way this applies to penis enlargement is that surrounding the blood holding tissues of the penis is something called the tunica albuginea. This is a stiff connective structure. Since it's a connective tissue, it has the same response to stimulus as anywhere else in the body. It releases a whole bunch of growth factors when under strain. So if you stretch it or cause overexpansion of the tunica albuginea, it releases these growth factors, causing growth, increases in flexibility. 
that growth means more tissue that you have for an erection. And then that extra flexibility means you can push out the existing tissue farther. Therefore, penis enlargement. <sighs> but you need more tissue to push out against this new connective tissue. And that's where the blood holding tissue comes in. You have two chambers of the penis. You have the corpus cavernosum, and then you have the corpus spongibiosum. The main one is the corpus cavernosum that holds about 70 to 80% of the erection. Since it is endothelial smooth muscle, that is a fancy way of saying blood holding tissue, it also responds to Davis's law. It responds to stretching a decent bit, but it responds very well to something called hypoxia. Hypoxia is the lack of oxygen in blood holding tissue. When you do this in a controlled manner for a short time, your body freaks out, says, hey, we're gonna build more blood holding tissue in this area, so the working tissues in that area have more blood to hold off any negative consequences from this hypoxic event in the future. You do this chronically, you're gonna build up more blood vessels in that area. Since the penis is mostly blood holding tissue, doing hypoxic events in that area will cause growth of the blood holding tissue. And I predominantly look at blood flow restriction therapy to help showcase the effects of hypoxia causing angiogenesis, the creation of blood holding tissue. Now, I could continue talk about every hormone, what it does, blah, 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 blah. First of all, I'll be honest, I'm not extremely well versed in that yet. Second of all, this is more of an introductory video. I wanted to lay out that my subreddit and my partner both take the time to make sure what we're talking about is scientifically sound before we open our mouth. I'm trying to help these skeptics understand the processes of why penis enlargement works. And honestly, you should be skeptical about any time someone tells you that penis enlargement works because how filled with scams is this industry? If you want to call it an industry, this field. It's basically built on scams. And then some of them figured out, hey, this works, but we're going to charge you 10x of what it's worth. So what we do is try to help you figure out what actually works and what's actually worth your time. And that's what this video is about. Showing you that yes, penis enlargement does work. And here's the X, Y, and Z of it. I'm just trying to make sure you spend your time wisely. If you want to learn more about penis enlargement, I have a bunch of videos on this YouTube channel talking about all the different methods that you can do. I'm probably going to have to update some of them soon. Be warned. But I also have a subreddit r slash getting bigger where I talk about them in detail and do demonstrations. So if you like this content, go there. If you like me, subscribe, the, like the video, Patreon, Peak Male Physique for penis enlargement aids. I'm BD and I'm done for today.